Okay, uh, Dato, what is the growth outlook for Islamic banking demand in Malaysia and also the Asian region at large in the next five years? Yeah, um, firstly, before answering that question directly, uh, one must understand that uh, when we talk about uh, growth uh, of the Islamic financial services industry, we have to look at uh, in what context are we talking about. If you are talking about Malaysia specifically, uh, we have uh, been seeing uh, spectacular growth uh, in Islamic banking, Islamic finance. Currently, we have something like uh, 20 over percent market share of uh, uh, Islamic finance uh, in the economy. Uh, it has been growing at the rate of about 20 to 23 percent in the last four years or so. I think the growth momentum will, will still continue. Uh, but uh, in other countries, for example, because it is starting from a very low base, uh, the growth can be higher than that. Uh, so the point I'm saying is that if uh, a country has uh, progressed very significantly and the base is higher, the uh, growth rate will be lower, but on a, on, a, on a smaller base, the growth will be much higher. What is then specifically the growth outlook for the main subsectors? If you look at the um, uh, liberalisation that have been announced by Bandar Malaysia uh, Securities Commission to develop, further develop the, the, the economy. Um, uh, we, we, we will see that uh, the uh, development in all these subsectors will uh, show uh, very significant growth in the double digit uh, in the, uh, you know, a, a double digit kind of growth numbers that we can see in the next few years so banking certainly it, it will continue to grow in easily fifteen to twenty percent or so. Uh, Takaful is an area that we, you know, uh, the industry needs to work harder on because the level of uh, penetration in uh, in the Malaysian market is still relatively low uh, for a number of reasons. I think uh, there has to be uh, more um, education being done to the public to understand what Takaful is all about. Uh, I think the, the area that you will see very, very significant growth is in the area of capital market. Uh, we will see suku growing very, very fast in the next few years um, with the announcement by the government <coughs> for the various uh, ETP projects uh, that's coming on stream and ha that have been announced. Most of them have announced that they will resort to um, raising the monies in the Islamic capital market. Uh, we will also see uh, more and more uh, uh, venture capital monies being made available uh, under Sharia compliance lines, uh, that is something which is good. Uh, the area that will need a little bit of attention from the authorities is on the Islamic fund management side, which I think um, is an area that we need to nurture and grow to ensure that Malaysia becomes, uh, or rather Malaysia is able to offer the entire suite of uh, Islamic financial products. So what is the biggest obstacle in putting the Islamic finance as uh, a forefront alternative to the conventional system? Well, I think I've alluded to some of those uh, factors. But since uh, you have asked me the question again, I think uh, the first thing that we have to uh, be made aware of is uh, market understanding of the products particularly on the CAFO, for example. When it comes to banking and capital markets, I think that's um, very well accepted by, by the market. So we need to do more education on the CAFO and the benefits of the CAFO and to explain the differences between 
conventional insurance and Entecafo. So an improved market understanding will help the uh, potential customers to understand better the uh, beauty of uh, Islamic financial services. The second issue is on the question of uh, um, well-trained human capital for the Islamic financial services industry. Uh, we need to train more people who are competent to sell Islamic financial services products. Uh, customers are becoming more discerning. Uh, they are asking more questions. Gone were the days when you just sell a product to a customer and the customer accepts it. Uh, now we are seeing uh, customers are beginning to question more and so there is a need for us to train a new breed of uh, bankers who understand uh, not, not only in marketing or selling the products but also to understand the Sharia aspect of the products, the practical aspects of the product. So in other words, giving good and quality advice so that when they approach the customers, they can explain to them. And, and so you, you can get the buy-in much easily. Uh, I, I think the third area is um, to open up uh, Islamic banking and Islamic finance uh, to the world. There should be more uh, cross-border kind of uh, deals involving Islamic banking and Islamic finance. And we are seeing that already under the MIFC initiative that uh, Benegara has announced. And so we are seeing uh, some uh, major uh, organizations uh, using Malaysia as a base to launch their uh, to raise funds in the Islamic capital market or so. Uh, and of course, uh, the final point is uh, there has to be um, uh, better reciprocity in understanding uh, the Sharia opinions of uh, other jurisdictions. Um, so Malaysia has adopted uh, uh, this concept of reciprocity where we recognize their Sharia edicts and we would also expect that one day they will respect our edicts. So uh, this is something which I think uh, moving forward, uh, if there is more and more Sharia convergence in terms of uh, opinion, uh, we can see uh, better growth for the Islamic financial services industry globally. So the next stage of development will not just be looking within the confines of uh, the domestic market, but also uh, looking at cross-border uh, developments. Okay, Malaysia is one of the main hubs uh, for Islamic finance and moving forward. Um, is it important for us to offer a different, uh, a better uh, niche service uh, or complete or compete with other hubs that offer uh, the same uh, financial services? Um, you know, the, the stage of development is different everywhere. If you, if you are talking about Malaysia, it's pretty well developed. Bahrain is pretty well developed. Um, if you look at Indonesia, uh, it is beginning to open up. Uh, Middle East or so, you know, dif different parts of Middle East, uh, they are all at various stages of development. But I think the key to the future is uh, in innovation. We have to ensure that uh, Islamic finance is able to keep abreast with the developments in the conventional sector. Because let's face it, uh, we are living in a world where uh, we have uh, two systems, the conventional system and the Islamic financial system. And consumers have a choice. And as I said earlier on, when, we, uh, when Malaysia embarked on its journey to introduce Islamic banking, Islamic finance, we make sure that it is inclusive in nature. So we must be able to delight our customers, whether they are Muslims and non-Muslims. So for the non-Muslims, the spiritual aspect is not important at all. For the Muslims, there's the spiritual aspect that one needs to consider. So that's, that's half of uh, the battle, so to speak. Um, 
So, so I think uh, we have to be able to come up with uh, new products uh, that uh, would be uh, acceptable to uh, our new cust uh, our cust uh, potential customers. The second aspect is to um, improve the overall uh, efficiency, uh, lower the cost of uh, uh, doing the business for Islamic banking and Islamic uh, financial institutions. So we've got to uh, improve the overall efficiency of, 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 of the industry, so to speak.